we now turn our focus on solving equations to rational equations. A rational equation is an equation that contains rational expressions. A rational expression is just a quotient of two polynomials. Recall that division by zero is undefined. So when we have variables in the denominator of an equation, we have to concern ourselves with what values make the denominator zero. And the values that make the denominator zero are called restrictions. The process of solving a rational equation may introduce solutions that are not valid in the original equation. These values are called extraneous solutions and must be excluded from the solution set. To solve a rational equation, we will follow these steps. We will first factor each denominator, if possible, and determine any restrictions on the variable. Again, those values that make the denominator zero. We determine the least common denominator and then multiply each side of the equation by the least common denominator. And we will solve the resulting equation, which in this section will be a linear equation. Solving this equation will yield the solutions of the rational equation. However, it may produce extraneous solutions. So we'll write the solution set discarding any values that are restrictions. Let's work an example. We want to solve the equation 9 divided by 4 minus 1 divided by 2x equals 4 divided by x. The denominators in this case do not need to be factored. Notice that the restriction on x is just that x cannot be zero. The least common denominator between four, two x, and x is four x. Multiply each side of the equation by four x to get four x times nine fourths minus one divided by two x equals four x times four divided by x. This is equivalent to distributing the four x to each term of the equation. That is, we get four x times nine fourths minus four x times one divided by two x equals 4x times 4 divided by x. Simplifying each product, we get 9x minus 2 times 1 or 2 equals 4 times 4 or 16. So the resulting equation is 9x minus 2 equals 16. To solve this, we add 2 to each side to get 9x equals 18, and then divide each side by 9 to get x equals 2. The value 2 is not a restriction. It does not cause a denominator to be zero, so the solution set is the set containing two. Now we can check our work if we want to by replacing the variable in the original equation with two, and we'll find that this yields a true statement. Our second example is to solve the equation x plus six divided by x plus three minus two equals three divided by x plus three. The restricted value for x is that x cannot equal negative three. 
the LCD is just x plus 3. Multiply each side by x plus 3 to get x plus 3 times x plus 6 divided by x plus 3 minus 2 equals x plus 3 times 3 divided by x plus 3. This distributes the x plus 3 to each term to get x plus 3 times x plus 6 divided by x plus 3 minus 2 times x plus 3 equals x plus 3 times 3 divided by x plus 3. When we simplify each product, we get x plus 6 minus 2x minus 6 equals 3. Combining like terms gives us negative x equals 3. Recall that negative x is negative 1x equals 3. So we divide each side by negative 1 to get x equals negative 3. The value negative 3 is a restriction on the variable. It will make us divide by 0 in that original equation. Since our only possible solution is not valid in the original equation, we must exclude that value from the solution set which leaves us no solution or the empty set. It is important for you to note that negative 3 does solve this equation after we clear fractions, that is this linear equation. It, however, does not solve the original equation, which makes it an extraneous solution. We solve one last equation, 1 divided by y minus 1 plus y plus 1 divided by the quantity y squared plus 2y minus 3 equals 1 divided by y plus 3. This equation requires us to factor the denominator of the second term. y squared plus 2y minus 3 factors as y plus 3 times y minus 1. The restrictions on the variable are that y cannot equal 1 or y cannot equal negative 3. The least common denominator is the product y minus 1 times y plus 3. Multiplying each side of the equation by the LCD, we can distribute it to each term to get y minus 1 times y plus 3 times 1 over y minus 1 plus y minus 1 times y plus 3 times y plus 1 over y plus 3 times y minus 1 equals y minus 1 times y plus 3 divided by 1 divided by y plus 3. Simplifying each product, we get 1 times y plus 3 or y plus 3 plus y plus 1 is equal to 1 times y minus 1 or y or y minus 1. Combining like terms we get 2y plus 4 
equals y minus 1. Subtract y from each side to get y plus 4 equals negative 1. And now subtract 4 from each side to get y equals negative 5. This is not an extraneous solution, so the solution set is the set containing negative 5. Now, pause the video and work the skill practice 5, 6, and 7 to check your understanding of this concept.